a rock and roll mystery. I'm Rebecca Lieb. I'm Jason Horton. And this is Ghost Town. The death of musician Bobby Fuller is an L.A. mystery. The circumstances around his death, right on the brink of stardom, have led to more questions than answers. This is the story of the mysterious and still unsolved death of Bobby Fuller of the band, the Bobby Fuller Four. People are like, I'm not 300 years old. I don't know who that (laughs) is. Well, I am 300 years old, so I'm going to tell you. If you're familiar with the song, I Fought the Law. Yeah. They did a cover of that, and that was probably their biggest hit. It was their version of I Fought the Law. Is it a little bit faster and kind of lower? It's 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 kind of like uh, like a, you know, mid-60s rockin'. I think their version is great. There's a ton of covers of it. Mm -hmm. Dead Kennedys. The yeah. Clash has a pretty pretty popular version, but I, I would say it's even up there with those. It's a pretty pretty up tempo, and a lot of people have covered it. It's you know an outlaw mm-hmm. yeah. song. I resonate with it because you know I'm such an outlaw myself. That's true. You know? but the law always wins. The law always wins because I don't defy it. Yeah. Okay. Fair. On July 18th, 1966, Bobby Fuller was found dead inside of his car at the age of 23 in Hollywood, California. So we have a. L.A. story, that's why I was always so interested in this. Wow. And the circumstances around his death are sort of mesmerizing and with all the different bits of information that are at play. Mm-hmm. And I think it's always been ruled as a suicide, somewhat dismissive. But people are still looking into it and people really feel like they don't have answers. And based on the information, it doesn't make a lot of sense. And 23, too. You know, 23 in the 60s is like he already has grandchildren by that point. <laughs> right. And, you know, listen, the rock and rollers burn out, the 27 Club. You know, we've talked mm-hmm. about Janis Joplin. We've talked about many musicians. This doesn't seem to be any of those things. Mm-hmm. It's not like he was a star for a while and then just kind of reaping those rewards of being a rock star. And it took a toll on him, although I can't you know, speak to what's going on in a human being's mind. He was really kind of on the verge of being a star, and that ended. In the early hours of July 18th, 1966, Bobby Fuller received a phone call, left his Hollywood apartment. His mother, Lorraine, was out. And I think she was living with him or near him. She was out from El Paso, and it was her Oldsmobile that... He borrowed. Got it. Nice big car. I, 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 I think I learned how to drive in an Oldsmobile. Big big green one, maybe. Oh, I love like the ones that are wood paneled and really long like a hearse. It is. It's, probably, it's a pretty solid piece of machinery. Love it. And really, this Oldsmobile essentially becomes his tomb in a way. So the, the car is somewhat important. It's an, an important figure in this is because that's where he was found. And a lot of strange things circumstantially have taken place but there's no answers yeah i feel bad about that hearse comment now so his mother is checking because she you know he went out late that night he got a phone call you know he's out he's 23 years old it's hollywood he's partying he's Mm -hmm. having a good time it's you know he's not probably doing charity work at least that night or attending a late 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 night mass he's you know he's doing what a 23 year old's supposed to do in hollywood when you're essentially a celebrity yeah so his mother is checking. He's gone all night, and she's probably checking every, what I imagine, every 30 minutes. Where Where's my son? But probably also not thinking the worst. Where's my car? Yeah. <laughs> Where are yeah. both of those things? Exactly. I want them both here and intact by midnight. You're a rock star, but you're still my son. She comes out at 5 o'clock, sees her car in the adjacent parking lot to 5 this. 5 a.m.? 5 p.m. 5 p.m., okay. Five, so it's 5 p.m. in the afternoon. He's been gone all night and all day. Wow. She's checking in regular intervals. Mm-hmm. That's important okay. when she's checking. Sees the car in, in a, I guess, you know, it's it's apartment complex. and Maybe there's another apartment complex or another little parking lot. The car is there. He is in that car, and he is dead. He is covered in burns and bruises. Jesus. There is a one-third full can of gasoline in the car, he's covered in the gasoline, and there's a hose. No keys. Door is unlocked. Police are called. 
they assume, oh, it's suicide. Yeah. And I'm sure, listen, the police probably are like another punk kid, a rock and roller, 1966. You're still like that kind of counterculture really doesn't start hitting for another. I mean, it's starting, but it's you know, 1965. There's starting to really be a true upheaval. But 1966, I believe, really started to boil yet. But it's still that idea of probably like rock and roller. Yeah. Committed suicide. Who cares? So what? Let's close the book on him. And, you know, and listen, is sometimes that the case? Sure. But what they found is his body was already in rigor mortis. What? So he's been dead for hours. He had a full bladder, which means that, you know, all these things mean that he's been dead for a while. How is he not there at 4 o'clock, 4.30? How is he there at 5 o'clock? Dead, but been dead for hours. Yeah. No keys. How did the car get there? How did he get like that? The police pretty much write it off. They see these burns. They're like, well, you know, it's gasoline. It's hot. He's been, you know, is sitting in the car. And that's pretty viable. But they, you know, the gas can, they're like, man, throw it in the garbage. Now, no, we don't need any, don't take any forensic information. Yeah. Which, you know, forensics... At that point, like pretty minimal, but pretty at the minimal, same but time, but worthwhile. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Fingerprinting has been going I mean, on for a while. We're talking about it authoritatively, like it doesn't make sense that they didn't investigate further. People weren't immediately questioned. There was no real true investigation in a way that you're like, hey, listen, these first few hours, this first twenty four hours is pretty crucial. They just write it off. Shoddy police work, pretty standard. I mean, it looks the way it looks, and I understand that, but things just don't add up. No, no. And not to say that, you know, he was, uh, again, just coming back from, you know, going to church or getting an ice cream cone either, but the fact that he committed suicide, he's like, oh yeah, he must have just drank a lot of gas and poured it on himself, died three hours ago, and then drove the car yeah. <laughs> back home. Did they have toxicology technology at that point? What they found as far as autopsy, and you could find autopsy information, but the problem mm -hmm. is the autopsy information is, first, it's suicide. Mm -hmm. Then, on another page, it's accident. Jesus. Then there's another page where there's just question marks next to both of them. <laughs> Get it together, LAPD. Um, Every PD. I think they really either rushed it or they kind of just made an assumption pretty quick and you know they you know they want closed cases right yeah. they want to close them as quickly as possible having a bunch of open cases is not great and it's it's a, probably a lot easier to be like hey what happened to you yeah, what happened to this my favorite singer oh he committed suicide and that's it and let's move on yeah absolutely i was gonna say the same thing where it's like they just want these cases behind them because i'm sure there's still even at this point like a glut of crime they don't want to deal too much with this young kid who probably is perceived of as being irresponsible out with his friends an up and coming rock star so around this time there was kind of a lot of things happening with the band and the theories around what happened to him how did he get there is huge how did this oldsmobile with him in it no keys apparently been dead for quite a while he has a broken finger it looks like he's been beaten. I mean, unless he did that to himself. But, you know, it's not a, from a, a substance. It's not the gasoline didn't break his finger. Yeah, no. They did not find any gasoline inside of him. So it's not like he drank any gasoline. My wheels are turning. So according to the L.A. County Coroner's Report, deceased was found lying face down in front seat of car, a gas can, one third full, cover open. Windows were all rolled up and doors shut, not locked, keys not in ignition. From what I've seen, there was no keys around. Where the fuck are these keys? I don't know. I don't know where the keys are, but and it's face still... down, like on the wheel. You think? I think yeah, in the in the driver's seat because the gas can I think was next yeah, to it. Know. And so, despite all the evidence, the investigators are convinced of suicide that he died from drinking gasoline. Which is listen, that's one. I, I would make that leap. It's not much of yeah. a leap. I'll be like, okay, sure. But there, it's an easy thing to find out. In fact, it's like a pretty rudimentary thing to find out when you do an autopsy. Absolutely. Also, I, I, I don't know, but I can imagine it's like, what a horrible, painful way to go. Drinking gasoline? How much do you even have to drink? Well, if, if it's one third Just full, OD, then they'd like be two thirds. Yeah, I don't know. And then the coroner determined that he died from asphyxia due to inhalation of gasoline. 
like I said, there's discrepancies on the coroner's report. It's inconclusive. We're not looking for necessarily the pursuit of justice. Mm-hmm. We're like, this is on the surface makes the most sense. Yeah. Good enough for me. It's not like there's 10 bodies in the car. Person's dead. So, so what? So what? Get them out of here. On to the next one. Book them, Dano. But there's nobody to book. Are you 300 years old? That's uh, mm-hmm. very... Maybe. <laughs> But on that morning of July 18th, 1966, all the members of the Bobby Fuller Four were expected to have negotiations with their label about the band's direction and a future European tour. And that was supposed to be like tense. They were not on the same wavelength when it came to a lot of that. And according to Bobby Fuller's friend, Rick, Bobby Fuller had a few beers before midnight on July 17th. And Rick said he fell asleep shortly after midnight. He noticed... Fuller left when he woke up at 2.30 a.m. And the last person that admitted to seeing Fuller alive was his landlord, Lloyd, who reported that Fuller had stopped by his apartment around 3 a.m. to drink more beer. Yeah. I guess timeline that kind of adds up. I think so. Bobby's friend, Boyd Elder, he arrived soon after body was discovered, and he remembers that the police didn't seal off the crime scene. As if it really wasn't a crime scene. It was like, it's a mess to clean up. Just a parking lot. Didn't take any fingerprints, didn't look for evidence, and the only thing that they said to him was, get the hell out of here. Not like, hey, who are you? How are you related to this person? Did you see him last? It was like, hey, somebody who has possible information, get out of here. And one witness saw a plainclothes officer remove the gas can from the back seat, in the back seat, and throw it in the trash. Did you just like, also just take a mint out of the glove compartment? Did they take the car for a ride? Like, what... Even in the 60s, this is so insane to me. It seems pretty recent enough that if you probably went over it again, you could probably find some answers, but there are some updates. Mm -hmm. But it's the theories, right? Everyone has theories, and there's a lot of them that are going around. Mm -hmm. I've got one brewing right now. Drugs. That Bobby supposedly wasn't much of a recreational drug user, but he, you know, was interested in LSD, as a lot of people. It's like, I want to, even though it's not out yet, I want to make Sgt. Peppers. Yeah. You know, I want to make Pet Sounds, Beach Boys Pet <laughs> Sounds. I don't want to wear these matching Cuban shirts. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't want to. cut boy friends. I'm sure, you know, probably, you know, a bit of rock and roll rebellion. I get it, the times are changing. Yeah. As long as I fought the law, you know, they, you know, have probably have a, a streak of like wanting to shake things up. Totally. And they mentioned that there might have been a party that he possibly overdosed at the party. And people wanted to cover it up. They're just like, mm-hmm. oh, no, he's the, what do we do? And there's other celebrities there. And they're like, I don't know, get rid of him. And who's to say that somebody not involved directly in the death, but they're like, I don't know, let's just pour a bunch of gasoline on him to cover up any evidence. Yeah. And drive the car there, set everything up, and then leave. Yeah. All this would be happening, though, at... You know, four or five in the afternoon. Mm-hmm. It was a rival band or musician, which makes very little sense only because it's very far-fetched. Yeah. But also, it's not like there's many bands. I mean, like, we could be successful if we get rid of the Bobby Fuller Four in 1966. Yeah. It, it's a bit far-fetched. I mean, it could be professional jealousy. It's like we where... wanted to go after Bob Dylan or Joni Mitchell. But let's go for this guy. Yeah. Bobby Fuller, the Bobby, Bobby Fuller, Fuller 4, you know. <laughs> and, you know, you don't know what the trajectory could be, you know. It's true. You don't know. But I don't think it was enough to be like, I'm willing to murder somebody over it. No. And then there's suicide. Mm-hmm. That he beat himself up, doused himself with gasoline. Broke his own drinking finger. Drinking some in the process. You know, they didn't find any. Mm-hmm. Then drove himself home three hours after he'd been dead. So that was all the things that would have to happen based on... This evidence. That's the supernatural theory, too. Is it a supernatural theory? No, that's, I mean, the life after death. Oh, and right, yeah. You're dead, you're going to drive yourself home. Sure, yeah, that His would be. His own ghost killed him. So there are no known suspects. God. What but, about Lloyd? Uh, Where's Lloyd? I hate, the, I, I, I hate, this is like, we'll get to it. Yeah. I'll let you finish. Yeah, you don't know much about the landlord, but maybe, you know, he had an out. I don't know. Like, it also seems like it's also a lot to happen. There's somebody that had to have seen him alive between the time before he possibly died and he left the house 
earlier that you know that that day before yeah according to randy his brother randy was the one who was interested in music and got a guitar and i think he went to the military and then bobby picked up says i like this and when he came back and he's like hey you want to do a band he's like yeah i'm the singer (laughs) i've co-opted this thing you were interested in while you were when you were you know when you were yeah when you were when you were serving representing you and probably you know probably the thing that made the most sense they had planned to go to a party at a beach that night they were supposed to go to a party and then melody apparently drove him to the party where people were allegedly drinking and doing drugs rumors that he died of an overdose it was a cover-up mm-hmm. so this this secret girlfriend melody supposedly had a boyfriend of her own Uh-oh. that had ties to the mob which i feel like ties to the mob is you can add that to almost literally any, everything like everything what, what even does that mean also melody convenient name for a musician's well, Melody right. actually makes an appearance on the October 18th, 1996 episode of Unsolved Mysteries. Ooh. She called like right after they aired this, they aired the episode. So I don't know if they, you know, it was when you watch it, you don't know if it's an actor playing, you know, Unsolved Mysteries yeah, in, you're in like, like, is this, E-Channel. It's good, like it's good. But, but they, it's like... I think it might have been an actor playing that when you watch mm-hmm. it. I don't think it was her and where they got that information from but she had called Mm -hmm. melody she was just like hey i just saw this episode she confirmed several facts on the story things Mm -hmm. they were saying she said she didn't date anyone who had ties to the mob and she was not with bobby the night he died but she also believes that bobby did not commit suicide so this is 1996 we're we're getting some information about that a little bit after the fact years later bobby's death was changed from suicide to accident which helps Keep it a cold case. Keep the cold case cold and not a closed case, I suppose. Yeah, I mean, but you still want, like, cold, yeah. You want it to be active, but you just need, it's like, this is one of those cases that, in my humble opinion, will never be solved because of so much grotesque negligence that happened in the very beginning of it. And it's to the point where it's like, this is in the 60s, people are dying out, you hope that maybe you'll find something. But even it's just like, Asking the mother for me, you telling me this case, which I'm not familiar with. There's so many people to talk to. There's so many. I'm sure he's an up and coming musician. There's a ring of friends, like a circle that he has that he runs with. What was his, you know, what was his mind like in general? What was his mind like the last time you talked to him? And yeah, I mean, there's people that know something, and yes, and also people are dying off. Mm -hmm. But then there's also people that tell people things. And is it secondhand? Maybe. But if you get 20 people that are independent of each other telling you the same thing, mm-hmm. might be something to it. Yeah. God forbid. So they hope, even to this day, and I feel like this is maybe as of 2019, they want to exhume his body and, and see yeah. what... I don't know what you get with modern forensics meets very, very decayed DNA. Yeah. So you, I guess you hope that the modern DNA can kind of offset the possibly poor quality of evidence from yeah. exhuming the body. The investigation. I mean, it, it's it's worth a shot, I think. I, I know stuff like that, you put the DNA into the system, and really you can't get anything unless there's already a match in the system, or at least what I know from like the Night Stalker case, for example. But why the fuck not? I mean, I assume family is still around and living. He was still pretty young when he died. But my theory is that he was out, partying, having drinks. I don't think partying even has to mean drugs per se, you know, went out, out really late, maybe had some drinks with the landlord, maybe like left to go do something or like go somewhere else or try to, you know, like keep the party going. And maybe he got jumped, honestly, right by his car. Maybe, you know, someone recognized him, up and coming musician again, beat him up. But then they were like, oh shit, we killed him, panicked, you know, what should we do? We have this body, whatever. All right, drive the car, let him They go. would have to know where he lives, though. That's a good point. So if, it was, if it was, strangers couldn't be like, oh, we, you know. That's I guess point. possibly, though, they could look at license, that information. That's a fair It's, it's also very risky. I mean, I don't know. Would you drive want to jump somebody? Well, if you felt guilty, if yeah. you, if there was, you're right. If there, I guess there has to be some connection because I think the guilt would bring, the guilt is saying, we're not going to leave this body in this car here, whatever. The guilt is saying we need to bring this back to this person so this body can be found. Yeah. It's it's probably a foul play, but probably it would have to be with somebody with some connection to him. Yeah. Because I think a perfect stranger, let's just say like, I'm a crazy, I want money, I'm a crazy drug addict. I'm mm-hmm. going to, you know, I'm going to 
I'm tweaking out. I know. Yeah. I sound like a narc. And then things go wrong, and they're like, oh, I feel really bad. Let me find out where he lives and, like, drive this stranger to his house. They probably would just run. Yeah. But if it's somebody connected to him, they're like, whoa, let's get him away from where we are. Yeah. Yeah. So you can't make a connection back to if it's in front of, oh, you live, you know, he was found on this street. You live on mm-hmm. that street. That's weird. And it's like nobody is questioned. It's obvious that there's a, you know, incongruency with the time of death and when the car got there. Like, why do we not have more, you know, casework around? It's just, it's so annoying because it feels like there's so much. There, there was at that point such so a wealth of evidence. Randy Fuller. Bobby Fuller's brother co-wrote a book in 2015 called I Fought the Law, The Life and Strange Death of Bobby Fuller. A theory was that Morris Levy, who was the owner of Roulette Records, and he had like, you know, those kind of mob strong arm tactics, mm-hmm. which is, and I get that. It's, sure. you know, it's a competitive industry. It's like, you know, I think that happened with like Elvis and Sun Records and, mm-hmm. and stuff like that back in the day. It's like very almost like all mafia issues hey there's money involved mm-hmm. no your artist is with us and same probably with movie studios yeah. no you're you know you're an rko yeah. actor that maybe he was involved in bobby's death and in 1966 bob Keane signed a deal with roulette to distribute bobby's music randy believes his brother may have been killed because he wanted to break out of a business deal with morris levy i think bob Keane is the one who signed them and yeah. you know managed them and such so that is part of what Randy Fuller things and I was like I mean if anything you probably have the most information on who your brother was but I say this about a lot of these things is nobody wants to eulogize the people they know in a negative way one because they might be like hey listen it's irrelevant I don't want to tell you and I don't want you to go on a tangent because one day you felt bummed out yeah and you're like oh it's definitely suicide yeah and also you don't want to you know maybe sell their me- sell their memory or who knows how clo- actually close you are with the person at 23. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe, you're, you know, yeah, we're in a band, but like. And who knows if you're fucked up? Like, yeah. Randy, like, we don't know his mental state. We don't know their relationship. Like, we don't know anything about the dynamics of, you know, their business partnership, essentially, and family relational partnership. You know, like I said, like, the idea of, like, a rival getting rid of Bobby Fuller, it's because he's not, he wasn't known, like, Paul McCartney was known or like you said like Bob Dylan was known where you don't have a lot of documentation on people that know him and know how they act or like I I mean I couldn't really find I couldn't find any interviews with him yeah he's at this point of his death he is a young up-and-coming but still one hit wonder essentially I mean they had you know one or two other songs but I thought the laws were the probably most known for and they sold the most as far as their music yeah. catalog. And again, maybe I'm seeing this through the lens of history. You know, we're so far ahead in the future, so that could be wrong. But it just, it doesn't, I, what I'm trying to say, it doesn't feel like you'd kill this person for money mm-hmm. or, you know, around business, really. The fact that we don't have a ton of information about Bobby Fuller in general, be it interviews or really testimonials about mm-hmm. him, just goes to show that he was really up and coming because people don't document those things yeah. until you have... Made arrived, it. yes, yeah. until you've made it. Totally. So I guess I'm trying to say, Melly, Bobby's ex-girlfriend, if you're listening, call in. Call in. We want to hear everything. We're going to get you such a good reenactment actor. It's going to be amazing. Just you wait. How old do you think Melody is right now? 18? 